Um, thanks a lot, Eric. Thanks, Tom. Um, appreciate you having me here for this uh, meeting, this presentation. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that uh, you, you joined on a Tuesday night to learn about LTD and about Smashball. And uh, before I, well, maybe I'll first I'll introduce myself a little bit more. Um, I'm James Snedden, and uh, I am talking to you today from the traditional territory of the Black Conf Blackfoot Confederacy and the Tsutina Nation here in Southeast Calgary. And so I work from a, a home office here in, in Calgary here, probably for almost 12 years um, for Volleyball Canada. And primarily I was working on the coaching side of things during that time, about 10 years, where in the NCCP and a lot of our coaching workshops. But recently I transitioned to this new role where I'm focusing on long-term development, a lot of those resources that we're putting out there that are pretty new. And then the grassroots stuff, which is our smash ball and community coach <clears throat> workshop, and then also indigenous uh, participation. So those are the kind of the three big things that I've been working on. And um, I've, I've prepared a bit of a, a presentation here on making the link between a lot of the new documents, new resources that we have with smash ball, with our grassroots stuff, with uh, what we're doing kind of at that youth development stage, we're uh, helping us grow the game. Um, but I do want to hear a little bit from you and on where you're at, what information you've had on Smashball and what information you've had on LTD. So if you're if you're an extrovert and, and you like to talk, uh, maybe just take your, your uh, microphone off and just share with me, you know, quickly your name, um, how much experience you've had with Smashball, uh, with LTD, or if you're more comfortable, just uh, shoot me uh, something in the chat just to say, yeah, I've never heard of Smashball before or I've, I've, I'm running Smash Bowl programs right now, uh, or I'm really aware of, of uh, LTD. I'm just trying to get a, a sense of my audience here. So uh, anybody want to share um, something, um, your, your background or experience? I'll go, I guess. Uh, my name's Sydney, and I have absolutely zero experience with Smash Bowl. Haven't ever really heard of it before. Um, and then LTD still fairly new. I've been coaching for a while, but just some of the terminology, not super familiar with. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll go next. Um, I'm Serena Ward. I'm in Regina and, um, I have just a little bit of experience with Smashball. I'm kind of aware of what it is, um, but I have a little guy who might be interested in playing some Smashball this year. I've been, uh, coaching with uh, our developmental league here in Regina, we the I can play league or whatever, doing atomic ball and then triple ball, and then I've transitioned over now to club with um, QCBC. So I've I'm in the U14 category now, but still interested to learn about the Smash Ball fundamental. Awesome! Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Looks like we got someone in, in chat. So Ken, um, no experience in both coaching club and high school, thought it was interesting subject. Perfect. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to share? Okay. I can I can share. I actually don't even know if I'm in in the right um the right presentation uh, i'm doing this for coaching u14 uh, triple ball so yeah i'm not sure if i'm in the right one or not but i, I don't know anything about smash ball either okay well that's that's totally cool if you want to stick around uh, the presentation is going to be about smash ball it's going to be about long-term development it's going to be about kind of understanding a lot of the concepts around long-term development and how it uh, it links to our new game of smash ball and how we feel like it's best to grow volleyball in in canada so if you're interested still in that um you know please stick around if not that's okay too you can you can head up okay i'll stick around thank you yeah. okay oh we got another one i know some kids who want to do the Smash Palooza, sweet. So that's uh, that's that program Tom's running, I think. Okay, great.
And that was Trish. All right, well, I think that's that's great. That really gives me a bit of an idea of, of who I'm speaking to here. And um, I'll go through my presentation now. And if at any point something really jumps out at you and you feel like you, you gotta ask a question, don't hesitate to take your mute off and uh, just go ahead and ask or, or shoot something into the chat. I can stop and address it. I will plan to speak for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes uh, at least, kind of depending on how fast I move through this. Um, and then we're gonna have a bunch of questions and, and discussion for the end. I will share also a couple links at the end or with some video. So there's some, a couple cool videos that I think you, you might enjoy uh, checking out uh, near the end as well. So I'm gonna go ahead here and share my screen. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Yeah, it looks good, okay. James. Perfect, thank you. And I'm gonna go into presenter mode. And that's my dog. It always barks when I'm making a presentation. There we go. Okay. So making the link uh, with LTD and Smashball is uh, is our topic. And so these are the, the new guidelines that I was telling you about earlier. So if you're not familiar with LTD, um, it's been around for a little while and we're now in the third iteration, third version. Um, there's a group called the Sport for Life Society that develops this material and updates it every year. And then all the sports kind of take that new knowledge and apply it to their own sport. And so that's what we've done. And it's been a, in, a, in progress now for almost two years because of COVID and so on. Um, but this is it here on the left. And the target audience for this document is really the entire volleyball community. So it's coaches, it's athletes, it's administrators, it's clubs, it's schools. It's, it's, a, it's a unifying document and it's in an effort to help us point us in a certain direction that we feel is, is good for growth of our sport. And uh, so that's that kind of generic document. This document here on the right um, is also very, very new. It's called the Volleyball Development Matrix. And that document is targeted towards coaches uh, mainly. And so for that document, it, it guides coaches in understanding what to coach, when to coach it, and then a few benchmarks. It doesn't teach how to coach. So we teach you know, the, the how-to coaching in our NCCP workshops and our other um, courses and, and opportunities. But it does kind of guide coaches in kind of those key areas that, that you might need to focus on in different stages. So, um, <clears throat> and just as a, as a general note, so we, we, um, we use these documents as a guide for developing our coaching courses. So they are important. They are developed by a group of experts over a long period of time. But I also wanna say that these are not mandates. These are guidelines. And often when we put out you know, documents like this at Volleyball Canada, a lot of people tend to look at it in a maybe a black and white fashion or maybe a dogmatic fashion. But we really don't wanna look at it that way because uh, this is more, there's a lot of gray into how we choose to develop players and athletes and people. And so uh, we want to approach it that way as we don't know, we don't have all the answers, but we do feel like this are, these are really good sets of guidelines that are going to help you be successful in, in developing volleyball. So um, there are a number of updates that have happened over the years to our LTD. And so I'm just going to touch on not all of them, but just the ones that are really critical to our youth development, our Smashball programs, our community programs. And so I'll, I'll start with the actual terms that we use. And I don't know if in the, in the past you've heard the term LTAD, long-term athlete development. Well, Sport for Life dropped the A, they dropped the athlete, because it was controversial ever since like 2005. And the reason was, is that the recreation um, sector, the education sector, they always looked at that term athlete and felt like that, that feels like high performance. That's not about us. And so we wanted to be more inclusive with our language to include um, all sectors of, of sport and recreation and health, because LTD isn't just a, a model to, to create these high performance national team athletes. 
It's a model both for just growing the game and creating athletes who are active for life and for our, our high performance pathways. So we wanna make sure that includes both with our language. Now, right from the beginning, um, our long-term development is based on the, the goal of making and developing physical literacy in kids. And physical literacy is, the definition here is on the left and it's kind of long and, and wordy. Uh, so it's the motivation, confidence, physical competence and knowledge and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life. Now, this little graphic is, is helpful here to, to kind of consolidate that stuff. It's physical literacy is the motivation, competence and confidence to be active for life. And so if we can just step back for a second on, on um, what that would mean for our society, if let's say 25% of our kids in Canada were active for life, 25% more were physically literate, 25% more were active for life when they grew up, what impact would that have on our healthcare system? What impact would that have on our the mental health of society. So the if we look at this, this is not just about growing volleyball. This is about uh, impacting our society in really big ways. And so I commend uh, like all of you for joining this, this call and for coaching in general, being involved in sport. You're having a really positive impact on, on young people and, and society as a whole. So again, also part of our... Um, the, the, the important pieces of our LTD is this developmental stages concept. And so if you've never seen this, this graphic here on the left, this is your LTD stages from active start all the way up to train to win or active for life. And they're based on kind of our stages of growth and development and maturation. And you can see here, this black box here represents where Smashball, our new program sits. And so it sits within kind of the second and third stage, the fundamental stage and the learn to train stage. Now, the fundamental stage is based on providing that solid base that kids need for movement skills. And so movement skills might be things like, you know, running, jumping, throwing, climbing, sliding, going to the park and climbing a tree, uh, playing with your brother and sister in the living room, uh, just ensuring that all the they have, kids have tons of opportunities to develop those basic fundamental movement skills that are gonna be needed for the next stage. And that's the, the learn to train stage here, the yellow one. And that stage is marked by kind of this ideal situation, uh, ideal environment for kids to learn sports skills. So for volleyball, you're passing, setting, blocking, serving, all those sports skills. Now, the reason why it's so ideal in this stage to introduce kids to um, skill development, sports skill development, is based on, well, first of all, the prior uh, stage, the fundamental stage, because now they're, they're ready for it. Now they have those fundamental movement patterns, those, those base movement skills that they can start now with, with sports skills. But if also, if you jump ahead to the train to train stage, that stage in particular is marked by a significant growth spurt and a long one. And so what happens to, to you and me when you're in a, your growth spurt? You're super uncoordinated. You're super awkward. Uh, I went through, I grew like a foot in one summer and I could not walk and chew gum. It was brutal. So if you think about our volleyball development system, I would guess that uh, maybe 60%, and, and I'd love to be proven wrong, maybe 60% of our kids who enter volleyball for the very first time enter volleyball around 13, which is the train to train stage. So I couldn't think of a worse time to introduce kids to volleyball uh, because they're going through that growth the spurt, because they're, they're awkward and they're coordinated, and because volleyball, as we know it in the adult game, is super demanding is super um, unforgiving. So volleyball is a rebound sport. It is not like basketball where you can catch the ball. It's not like soccer where you can dribble the ball. Uh, it's a rebound sport. You have a nanosecond to be in the right place at the right time and execute the right skill. And so that's why we, we feel so strongly 
about pr providing a, a, a game like Smashball that is appropriate uh, for the, the developmental level of these kids in these two stages. <clears throat> so um, that leads me next to kind of our, our, what we've recently developed is this stage appropriate games um, guideline. And so we actually spent a whole bunch of time around three months with a, a committee of people across the country to develop this one uh, fancy graphic. Um, but it, it does represent well what we would like to see across the country because we feel it, it, it's most beneficial for kids and their pathway towards standard volleyball. So we've got here at the beginning smash ball and uh, it's broken up into five different levels, level one, two, three, four, five. And you start by playing one and one and then two v two and three v three. And then you would progress to what we call either four and four triple ball or six on six triple ball and then eventually regular volleyball. Now, what's been interesting is there's been pockets of groups around Canada who have adopted smash ball at that kind of nine to 12 year old age category. And what we're actually seeing is that when they go through this program, they're enjoying it, first of all, because it's modified. There's uh, the rules are changed so that you can catch and throw the ball and you allow one bounce and I can get into the rules in a little bit. But um, they're progressing through these stages so that by the time they get to kind of 13 years old, they're not really necessarily needing triple ball as much as say a 13 year old who's first entering volleyball for the very first time, who really needs triple ball because when they start serving, they miss every serve. And when they serve the ball over, the other person shanks the ball to the side and there's no rallies and there's no fun and there's no opportunity for development. So for that 13 year old who's just entering, um, triple ball is great, but for that, that child who's maybe experienced four years of smash ball, that opportunity to place triple ball is probably gonna be really short. And they may not even need it very much because their skill development be so high. They can quickly transition to the six on six game while still maintaining rallies, while still being able to serve the ball over the net, to pass the net, to, to set and to attack. So that's our hope in the long term, and, and that's uh, the reasons behind why we have this kind of progressive uh, stages of games over the course of, of a child's lifespan. Now, the other thing that we've noticed here on the left-hand column is this bit of a guideline too on how do we know when to transition from smash ball to say four and four triple ball? Or how do we know to transition from smash ball level two to smash ball level three? Well, we, we created this guideline and it says teams and players only progress from one game format to the next when two thirds of serves result in a third offensive contact. So a smash or a tip. And so that just means really it's a 70% success rule. So if you're, if the kids and you're watching the kids play and they serve the ball and somebody attacks the ball or spikes it 70% of the time when the rallies that you're watching, well, then they're probably ready to say move up from level three smash ball to level four smash ball. Or they might be ready to move up from say uh, level four or five to four and four triple ball or six on six triple ball. So this guideline here is designed to encourage coaches and, and teachers and clubs to think about the skill development level and how they progress through the games based on what they can do versus their age. So I know a lot of the time we just have age categories. Okay, in this age category, we're going to do this. In this age category, we're going to do this. But if we base it on their skill development level and, and the amount of success that they have, we feel like it, it'll be a, a much more um, appropriate way to help kids move through the stages. And that 70% rule, by the way, is based on a lot of research on kids uh, and adults being in the right um, flow zone, they call it, where if you have a 70% success rate in kind of your practices or your games, um, you're in the right zone. If you're succeeding 90% of the time, you're going to be bored and you're not going to want to play as much. If you're succeeding 30% of the time, you're going to be super frustrated and you're going to want to uh, quit sport altogether. So we need to have that, that success rate around 70%. That's our sweet spot that we're going for. 
um, when we're playing games and when we're running our practices and, and delivering these, these unique modified games as well. So now that we've built this Smashball program in this game, which by the way, we adapted from uh, the Netherlands and we modified some of the rules, um, but we, we developed an app. And so it's for free. Um, if you just go to the Google um, App Store or Google Play or the App Store, you can download it for free. And what it does is, is it just educates anybody who wants to know what Smashball is all about. So it provides the basics. You get some videos of all kind of shows you what, it, what it's like. There's the rules of the game, there's the setup, and then there's some lesson plans. And so the lesson plan section shows kind of the sequence of what we recommend to run a practice. So you've got your warm up, groupings, a smash ball game, skills and tactics, smash ball game, uh, cool down. <clears throat> and then as you go further into the lesson plans, like let's say level one smash ball, it gives you a couple examples for each activity. So for the warm up, you click on this button, it takes you to a video that shows you a warm up for that you can do. Um, and there's a skills and tactics section where it'll give you two examples of, of some drills that you can use. Um, so it's a, it's a really great starting point for anybody who wants to just give it a try. So you don't need necessarily a whole lot of coaching or education necessarily, but if you go through the app in, in great detail, you'll be pretty prepared to just give it a try. But we did want to create a, a new workshop called the Community Coach Workshop to support coaches to give them that extra confidence and that extra preparation that they need to deliver a Smashball program. So this, this workshop is brand new. We've run it, uh, I don't know, four or five times so far. We're training learning facilitators right now, and it's going quite well. And, and uh, our coaches seem to be getting quite a bit out of it. And what it is, it's, it's three hours. It's entirely online. Uh, learning facilitators there. There's video demonstrations. There's quizzes and so on. And we really draw out the information from the app, but we also build on that and give them additional ideas and additional resources on how to run a Smashball program and how to run a Smashball lesson. So just to back up a little bit, <clears throat> that Smashball workshop is uh, fits into this section of our coaching pathways. This graphic represents all of our NCCP coaching pathways. So you can see here, this is the community stream. It's from six to 12 years old, fundamentals learn to train. And then we have two options to become a community coach. And one of them is the club version that I just showed you. And then the other version is this elementary uh, volleyball version. And that one, it targets uh, specifically elementary school teachers and elementary school PE curriculum. So that's really the only difference. We, we've targeted those two uh, specific groups, uh, both with the idea of, of delivering age appropriate games and smash ball. Now, the other big difference here in, in our, the way we want to deliver games and ensuring that kids are enjoying their experience is the equipment. It's pretty significant. Now, what we recommend here for Smashball in particular is a badminton court. Um, and the badminton court, because it's smaller, it's really quite an ideal court for kids that, you know, six to 12 years old, you can split it in half for the really young ones and play one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two. The lines are already there. And, and for the most part, the, the badminton poles can be used for smash ball, but we recommend this specific pole. And the reason why is because uh, often your 10 year old, 12 year old, uh, 11 year old, they, as they get taller, the net actually might even be get too low. And so when they're jumping and hitting, they could have a risk of getting a ball in the face while they're, while they're hitting. So that's why we recommend this pole. This is the badminton height. And then you've got some incremental steps up here for the volleyball height. And the other important piece about this pole is that because it, it has these incremental steps, it also allows for uh, this to happen. And that's the adjustment of the, of the net height based on the players themselves. So there's no standard net height like there is in adult volleyball for men and women volleyball. We want to adjust the height of the net so that it's the height of the shortest student's wrist. And the reason for that is that we want every child to experience success early with attacking, with hitting, with smashing, because that's what the game is about. It's, it's about hitting right away. And uh, it's not about focusing on passing right away or serving right away. 
we want a hit and we want that enjoyment to happen for the kids <clears throat> right away. So um, that's a, a big piece. And then we've got our ball here. And so the ball is also pretty critical. This is the Mikasa one. It could be any light ball, but this one is seven ounces. Our regular ball is around like nine ounces. So um, this really could be the difference between kids you know, enjoying sport, staying in sport versus this hurts my arms, I don't want to play anymore. So uh, something really important to consider while we're, we're running these programs. Uh, this, this graphic here also just represents the, another way that you could approach um, adapting your courts. You could use a volleyball court to go lengthwise and then have two smash ball courts, or you could just split it in half with an antenna and then mark it out with cones or, or floor tape as well. So different ways to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, those are our, our main recommendations. Now this slide represents what's in our LTD manual, our 3.0 document, and it's at the very end and it just helps us measure what we're doing. So if we feel there are certain things that we should do to grow the game, let's measure them. Let's see how we're doing. And so we've got some big important goals here at the top. We got, uh, whoops, we got safety, participation, retention and excellence. And these first three, in my opinion, these are kind of process goals. And, and if we do these three things well, we might get excellence. Um, but if we don't do these three things well, we definitely won't get excellence. Um, and then in the manual also, we have these stage specific goals. And so I just pulled out four of them and uh, here they are. So clubs are offering nine to 12 U programs run by a trained community coach. We feel like if that was happening, we're gonna we're gonna see some great growth. Uh, clubs have the appropriate equipment, so light balls and net systems. Clubs are playing smash ball or four bv triple ball in any competition environment, and clubs progress from four v four triple ball when they play level four smash ball, and serve two of the three serves result in a third offensive contact. So that's that kind of guideline we we talked about earlier, the seventy percent rule, um, and and. Uh, through a survey, hopefully coaches are now starting to move and progress kids through, through these stages based on their abilities and their enjoyment level. Well, I'm going pretty fast here, so <laughs> uh, welcome. Any questions if you, if you have them? I'm going to keep plowing away here if you don't. But uh, the next section here is on the matrix. And this is a brand new document. And I don't know if you've ever heard of an athlete development matrix before, but typically when sports produce these things, they have four pillars and they're here on the left. Technical, tactical is one, physical, psychological skills and life skills. And that's what we had in the past. And what we found though, is that it was a lot. It was really overwhelming for coaches to look at this stuff and try to apply it to their practices. And so we consolidated these two pillars, psychological skills and life skills into one. And we renamed it person pillar, athlete pillar for the physical, and player pillar for the technical tactical. And we reordered our priorities as well. Because normally we everyone focuses on technical tactical at the very first in, in almost all sports. And so what we wanted to do is have a person-centered approach. And what that means for us is we need to really consider. Uh, the person first and the sport second. Um, I got someone here in the chat. I'm just going to check. There's a question. Is there a similar app for triple ball and volleyball? No, there is not, but that's a great idea. And it's on our list to um, create an app for our volleyball courses. So great question. Thank you. Um, so just continuing on here. Um, We've flipped the paradigm a little bit, and often it's because people think or coaches think that we're coaching volleyball, but in fact, we're not, we're coaching people. And what happens if we don't necessarily focus on these, these needs, these, uh, these common, um, common needs, connection, care, courage, those, those core items, we don't focus on them. It's very difficult to grow. It's very difficult to develop. It's very difficult to progress. And um, so we need those things as a base, really, in order to, um, to help people grow and develop. So just to get, I guess, a bit more specific in what the person pillar is, 
if we've got any psychology buffs in the room, this first pillar here, common needs, is based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this, this entire pillar was developed by our mental performance consultants and our mental health consultants. And so within each little pillar, we've got here these additional elements. So physiological, what, what's that? Well, that's your, your food, your water, your shelter, just your basic common needs. <clears throat> safety is both your physical safety, but also emotional safety. And then belongingness, I mean, that's that's huge, right? We're in a team. Imagine the, the, the impact that it has for a child to feel like they belong to something positive, um, really important to their growth and development, and, you know, a positive self-esteem. Uh, so critical elements to, to understand and do our best to support. The next uh, pillar here is connection. And so connection to the present moment, that just means mindfulness. That means not being worried about the past when you're playing on every point, not being worried about uh, the future. Um, it's being in, in the present moment. So connection to self is being more self-aware, knowing who you are, who you want to be. Connection to others, and that's that relationship building piece that's so important in team sport. Now, care for, oops, care for self, obviously important, care for others, care for groups. Um, so that's your team, that could be your club, that could be your community. Uh, and courage is huge in, in sport and in volleyball, courage to take risks and fail, courage to commit and persevere. So in, in this pillar and, and all the pillars that I'm gonna share with you next, we intentionally integrated in our practice plan templates kind of a, a reflection process for the coach to think, how can we integrate this person pillar into practice? Um, who, what resources can I seek or support and provide to the athletes in, in maybe what they need? So another example is the athlete pillar. So how do we integrate the athlete pillar into our practice plans, into our smash ball pro, uh, pro, program. So you'll find in, in smash ball, for example, all of these things are already integrated into the program. For older kids and who have developed, a lot of this stuff is start gonna happen in the weight room outside of practice. But for our kind of youth development stuff, it's, you know, you're playing tag for speed. You're doing a lot of the skills and, and um, sport activities for strength. You're doing a cool and cool down and warm up for suppleness. Your stamina is built up through the programs over the weeks that you're, you're running your smash ball program. And finally, the player pillar, this is what all coaches know and understand. Um, we present it in a little bit different way, maybe you're used to seeing. Um, and so how we view player development is that in every volleyball action, there is a problem to be solved. And usually that problem is solved by seeing what happens. So that's your cue reading. Seeking a solution, that's your decision-making. And then executing a technical skill. And then all of that happens within some sort of volleyball system. And we break that down into basic and intermediate systems and then basic and intermediate skills. And so within the, the matrix itself, there's additional guidelines that help uh, coaches understand what skills to focus on, what's, what systems to build, up, to build over the course of, say, you know, a program or over the course of even four years of the, the Learn to Train program. And so this slide represents kind of that four-year objective. If you're in that Learn to Train stage, that kind of nine to 12-year-old age group, our, our main objective really is to initiate, which is just to expose them to this stuff, and then acquire. And so the definition of that is <clears throat> athletes can perform a rough form of the skill, but they lack rhythm and flow. The skill form deteriorates further when under pressure or in competition. So that's kind of our expectation when we're working with this young age group is that we're not expecting adult volleyball. We're expecting a toss and a catch. We're learning how to toss the ball. We're learning how to catch the ball. Sorry. Um, and we're learning kind of these, these basic skills here. Now, in addition to the skills, we've got the systems here, and these systems are aligned with our five levels of smash ball. So level one smash ball, the focus is learning how to position and handle the ball. 
Uh, level two is about moving and cooperating. Level three is about building an attack. Level four is about passing and defending. And level five is about uh, developing a structured and organized game. So all of this is based on um, these levels of the game. And so if you've, like most of you haven't had much experience with Smashball, these are the levels, these are the rules of the game. And in every, um, every level, you're allowed one bounce. And uh, you don't have to let it bounce, but you can. And so really the principle that we're trying to get across here is that we want to get to the smash. And so in level one, we can see that we don't want the skill preceding the smash to be difficult. We want to get to the smash. So we got to make sure that the skills we go towards the, the smash are helping us get there and helping us get lots of rallies. So we serve, we, we, we let it bounce once, our partner uh, catches the ball, they run to the net, they toss it to themselves and they smash it over. And then uh, your partner catches the ball, runs to the net, tosses to themselves, smash it over. So, um, and as you, as you progress in the levels, you can see that um, now that we're playing two on two in level two, now we got to figure out how to work with our partner. Now we got to figure out tossing the ball to the net to our partner, tossing the ball along the net to our partner and then smashing it over. And then level three is focused mainly on um, the setting skill. And level four is focused mainly on the passing skill. That's the real volleyball skill. And then you can see that both in level three and four that um, we're, we're adding an easier skill to continue the rallies in order again, to make sure that we get to the smash so that we get to hit all the time. And then finally, level five is, is essentially regular volleyball. It's all the volleyball skills, serve, pass, pass set, attack. So what I'd like to do just at this point in time is, is share a video uh, of Smashball so you maybe get a, a bit of a better understanding than just me talking about it. And in the past, when I share a video and I try to share it on Zoom, it's, it is always a bit choppy. So what I'll do is I'll share the, the link here in the chat. I'll play the video on my end, but I'll, I'll mute it so that we'll kind of know that how long it is and we'll, we'll kind of come back to the group uh, after four minutes and 35 seconds so i'll give you a chance to look on it on your phone or your computer uh, go through the four minutes and 35 seconds of the video and then we'll come back as, at a group and maybe we'll chat about some of the rules and, and the game of smash ball uh, so uh, that sound good to everybody so i'm going to just stop the share and share the link here in the chat And on my mark, you can go ahead and watch it. And I'll watch it too here on my end. And then we'll come back in, in about four and a half minutes. On your mark, get set, go.
Okay, has everybody finished the video? Maybe put up your hand if you're not done. Okay, great. Awesome. Now, um, let's maybe just chat about it real quick. Um, what are your thoughts on what you saw in the video? What are your thoughts on, on kind of Smashball in general? Um, I might start us off by saying, you know, the video that you watched there was kids who were, were pretty advanced. They're, they're probably 13, even 14, some of them. And that, that level of skill doesn't exist in our typical smash pro, pro, ball program. And so that's some really important to know. Uh, but we, we wanted to demonstrate what it looked like um, without, with, so that people understood the game and the sequence and the rules. So the other thing I, I wanted to quickly note was that if you'll notice too how, so, how tall some of them were and when they were hitting, they were like this high over the net. And so that's again, why we recommend that a bit of a taller pole, whether it's a volleyball pole or that extended badminton pole that I showed you earlier, just so that they can adjust the height for the taller players uh, and the shorter players. So yeah, just, just curious your thoughts um, on the video and uh, any questions that you might have. I thought it was like a, the concept of it is interesting. I think the video for myself, just because I literally had no idea what it was beforehand, was maybe a little bit fast because they were advanced. And then with the multiple courts, like it was a lot going on. So I was trying to focus on one thing, but I think the concept is cool. It would just look obviously a lot different with athletes who are not as advanced. And so it might, um, might not obviously flow as smooth, but I think it's a great way to start, um, athletes into volleyball. So overall, I thought it was really good. It was just a little bit fast as you're trying to grasp the whole concept in each level. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really great point. That's that's the reason why actually in the in the Smash Ball app, if you download that one, uh, every level has a, a video of its own. So if you're in level two, there's a specific video. It's a little bit slower. So hopefully, I think that'll that'll help as well um, in just gaining an understanding of the rules of the game. But yeah, great feedback. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Those were some pretty talented kids in the video. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Having been around a lot of um, learn to play uh, over the last five years, I'm like, I don't think I have kids who can hit that well at U14 yet. So, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it looks like a fun game for sure. Okay. Yeah. I think it's cool. a good way to learn it. Yeah. I, th I think I've heard that feedback a lot. We're almost motivated enough to shoot another video for kids who are not that skilled so that coaches have a better realistic expectation of what it's going to look like. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's true for sure. I was just wondering, is there a way that score is kept or how does that work? Uh, typically we play timed games. Um, so we find that when you're in a smash ball program, we, we always play first and then we do some skill development stuff and then another game. And so we'll have time games of, of maybe five, 10 minutes and we'll rotate them. Um, you know, after five minutes, that sort of thing. We we don't really feel like uh, having a score is necessarily helpful. It kind of adds the added difficulty of keeping track of the score or scorecards. We just want the kids to play. And uh, so they'll kind of keep score on their own <laughs> if they're competitive, right? Um, but uh, we like to time the games. Any other thoughts? Okay. Any thoughts uh, outside of the, the video itself or any um, any questions that you have on long-term development on the matrix? I, I should mention that um, the document itself, the long LTD 3.0 is on our website right now. It's, um, it's on the about section under LTD and it's on the webpage at the bottom in a PDF and we haven't promoted it. It's actually been a, a, a soft launch. Uh, not very many people even know about it yet, but our plan is to promote the document itself and its contents 
pretty heavily, I mean, starting in, uh, in the new year. We haven't actually released the matrix yet. And so we're, we're still in the final stages of tweaking it, but also translating it before we can release it. So, but I will share with you just kind of the latest version for this group. You can have the, the sneak peek if you want of, of the current document um, in an email after this call. Um, but uh, we should always, you should always check on the web page itself for the latest version of it because we continue to add resources and links and, and other things into this, this document because we wanted to keep it alive and, and not on the shelf for 10 years. Um, like documents can can be. So um, hopefully this presentation was helpful. I do have one more video that I can share with you that I think is really cool um, and really encapsulates a lot of the, the principles, the research, and the reasons behind, behind why we, we like Smashball and why we choose to do things the way that we do. Um, and it's a hockey video. And I'm not sure if, if you've seen this one before, but it was uh, it's uh, it was done by USA Hockey in their development section, and uh, it's it's kind of funny, and uh, and and like I said, really encap encapsulates a lot of uh, theory and and principles behind what we're trying to teach here. So I'm going to drop it in the chat again here, and go ahead. It's only two minutes and. 53 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and watch it here too on my end. And then we can uh, come back and wrap it up. I mean, it's daunting. It's huge. Okay, has everybody had a chance to take a look?
All right. What are your thoughts? You see the connection between kind of the what they're trying to do in USA Hockey and, and Hockey Canada to some degree around reducing the, the size of the rink to reducing the size of the court, the size of the net, lowering our net, um, reducing the number of players to, to have more engagement, the one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, three on three. Um, all of those principles um, are just crossing over between kind of the hockey model, what they're doing there, and, and our volleyball model. So uh, I'd love to produce a similar video like this for volleyball, but I just found it so um, fitting for what we're trying to do and, and the principles that we're trying to apply for, for volleyball. So um, hopefully that all makes sense. And uh, if, yeah, if you have any other questions or thoughts, I think we're at the end of our time and I'm happy to answer any uh, any questions or if you want to chat with me, uh, I'll just put up my email here. Um, that's the actual matrix document that I'll share with you, but this is uh, my email here if you want to uh, give me a shout. And I uh, just appreciate your time, appreciate your uh, uh, willingness to listen and uh, and learn. So thank you and, and I guess we'll Hopefully, uh, talk to you later. Okay, James, do you mind uh, just going to your uh, or closing out your presentation view? And then we can kind of have a few questions here um, at the same time. So uh, one of the things I might kind of lead the conversation here is um, the ratio we talked about how making it smaller and then going on in badminton courts. Um, do you find that you can still kind of get 12 athletes involved if you are doing more one-on-one -on -one to initiate this smash ball? How does that kind of translate as far as trying to get everyone involved if you don't have a facility that has uh, multiple courts? Yeah, typically in most facilities, if you've got one volleyball court, you've usually got two badminton courts. And so the number of uh, players that you've got is, is going to be around the same. Um, and what I find with the badminton courts, it's set up in such a way that there's space in between the courts already. So you don't have to design that or put uh, put down tape or cones or anything with the volleyball court. Um, the other thought I had around that is that for older athletes or players, uh, we actually have a warm up where they play level one smash ball uh, as their warm up almost every time, even if they're 12 years old. You can split the court in half, or you can even split it in in a in thirds, and just have them toss themselves and hit it over as as a warm up. But for the younger kids, you can always divide the the badminton court in half when you're playing one on one or two on two, and so that should keep your ratio of of players. Uh, pretty strong as far as the number of kids in one badminton court versus the number of kids that you would have on a, on a volleyball court. Okay. Does anybody want to jump on that topic or something else that uh, was picking uh, your, your brain a little bit through this process or conversation? I maybe missed it, but what was the time length? Like you said, it's not points uh it's more of a timed game so what's kind of the average time to get through a level to get through a level or for like a match like a like a game uh i guess just a game or a match okay um it depends on your your age group if you're six years old obviously the the shorter duration maybe even five minutes as you get to your 12 year olds, you might even get up to around 12 to 15 minutes per game. Um, and it, within a program itself, because the kids are playing so often, what we recommend is they play like smash ball level two at the beginning. They do some skill development stuff. They play a game again, um, smash ball level two again after. Um, within that time, they can play, you know, two or three games against different groups. And uh, maybe five minute games are pretty ideal. Um, sometimes you can maybe get it up to seven minutes, again, depending on the age. A lot of this is really dependent on the coach and the feel that you get from the players and, and how much attention span you think that they have.
Um, I guess if there's no other questions or if you're about to <laughs> add one, um, before we go, for those of you that are trying to get some professional development points for your certification levels, um, and if you don't know what that is, <laughs> you can connect with me by email. Um, but essentially, um, tonight is kind of a, you're going to get one point to kind of for attending at the online session. And then this weekend, for those of you that are attending the sessions that are in person, you'll also be getting like a, a basically a point for the morning and a point for the afternoon for attending um, that um, Saturday uh, sessions. Uh, those points basically go into a locker room system for all coaches that keep track of like um, basically your allowance of points for a year, you're trying to kind of basically accumulate so many points based on your certification level. Um, and then, so that's kind of for the duration of a, a five-year period. So um, if you're interested in getting those points, please, if your name is not correct on your, on your computer at the moment, um, please to drop your name in the chat room so that I can, we can add those um, to your, uh, to your coaching center um, and locker points. So, um, Aaron, is it okay if I jump in for just a moment? Yeah, I was going to say, Tom, you're next in here. Okay, great. Um, I, I, James, you set the table for me perfectly. Thank you so very much. Um, on Saturday um, at our in person training, the very first session. At 10 o'clock is going to be smash ball fundamentals. So I've got kids, children, six to eight years old, and I'm going to take, we're going to go through an hour of some examples of, of activities with the children. And then you're going to see level one with six, seven, and eight year olds. Trust me, there is no jump serving. Okay. <laughs> None of them jump serve. We're happy when we can overhead pass the ball, pardon me, overhead push the ball over the net. Um, so that's what we'll be doing for the first hour. The second hour, I've got uh, children nine to not ages nine to eleven coming in. You'll be able to see the the difference between the the first group, where tossing and catching the ball is is our goal, to being able to attack the ball uh, and incorporate that into smash ball. There we'll do uh, the second group. We'll do probably level one, level two. I don't know if we'll get to level three with them. Uh, so I think that uh, that you'll be able to see exactly what James is talking about um, on a, <laughs> I'm not being negative, but on a more realistic um, level. So James, thank you so much. That was, you set the table absolutely perfectly for me. Thank you very much for that. All right, great, awesome. I will add one more thing while I still have the, the, uh, my mute, uh, I'm unmuted. Um, we are having a, I'm calling it a Saskapalooza smash fest. Uh, it's a smash ball competition, a one in uh, Regina on November 26th and one in, in Saskatoon on, on December 3rd. So folks, I will be sharing information with you at Saturday's event. There's also the same information is on our, our website. So again, James, you have, have continued to just keep setting the table for me. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're gonna get a chance to see all of that for those of you who are coming on Saturday and wanna have your children participate um, at the end of November and beginning of December. Perfect. 